Ever wondered why the present moment seems so elusive, almost as if it's slipping through our fingers? This question is at the heart of Eckhart Tolle's transformative book, The Power of Now. Tolle invites us to consider a simple yet profound truth. The present moment is all we truly have. In our day-to-day -day lives, our minds often wander. We find ourselves replaying the past or anticipating the future, and in doing so, we neglect the beauty of the present. This is the principal theme in The Power of Now. Tolle encourages us to recognize this tendency, to acknowledge it but most importantly, to overcome it. By embracing the present moment, we can find a sense of peace and fulfillment that often eludes us. But how do we accomplish this? How do we harness the power of now? So what happens when we start embracing the power of now? Let's delve into the chapters of this enlightening book to find out. Have you ever felt controlled by your thoughts? Imagine a sea of thoughts swirling and crashing around you. It's easy to get caught up in the tumult, isn't it? Now, picture a serene observer standing on the shore simply watching the waves. This is the essence of Eckhart Tolle's first chapter in The Power of Now. He emphasizes that we are not our minds and introduces the concept of the thinking mind and the watching mind. The thinking mind is that tumultuous sea teeming with thoughts, memories, worries and plans. The watching mind, on the other hand, is the calm observer on the shore, watching without judgment or reaction. Tolle suggests that when we identify too closely with our thinking mind, we lose our sense of presence. We are swept away by the waves of thought rather than standing firmly in the now. But by recognizing that we are not our minds, we can step back, observe, and find peace in the present moment. Understanding that you are not your mind is the first step towards truly living in the present. How often do you find yourself dwelling on painful experiences? In the second chapter of Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, we delve into the concept of using consciousness as a pathway out of pain. Tolle highlights how we, as individuals, often let past traumas and future anxieties consume us, trapping us in a cycle of suffering. In contrast, he proposes a transformative approach, Imagine if instead of being prisoners of our past or hostages of our future, we could learn to live in the present moment. By doing so, we allow ourselves to detach from these painful experiences. We can observe them, understand them, but not let them define us. This shift in perspective, Tolle suggests, is not just about mitigating pain, but about transforming it. It's about acknowledging that pain exists, but not letting it control our lives. It's about finding peace in the now. By focusing on the now, we can free ourselves from the shackles of pain. What does it truly mean to live in the present moment? This question is the heart of chapter three, where Eckhart Tolle presents us with practical tools to anchor ourselves in the now. One of his key techniques is observing the mind, noticing our thoughts without judgment or attachment. This practice allows us to step back from our minds and recognize that we are not our thoughts, but the awareness behind them. Next, Tolle encourages us to focus on the body. By grounding ourselves in physical sensations, we can quiet the chatter of the mind and become more attuned to the present moment. Lastly, surrendering to the present moment is a vital step. This doesn't mean giving up or resigning ourselves to our circumstances, but rather accepting the now as it is. This acceptance liberates us from the constraints of the past and the anxieties of the future. Moving deeply into the now is the key to finding peace and fulfillment. Are you ready to embark on a journey towards enlightenment? In the heart of Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now lies the essence of enlightenment, a concept that takes center stage in chapters four through eight. As we delve deeper, we find that enlightenment isn't about grand gestures or extraordinary experiences. It's about recognizing and fully inhabiting the present moment. Tolle speaks about the ego, not as a Freudian term, but as a collective dysfunction, a form of identity derived from our past. It's a false self created by the mind, a constant chatter that pulls us away from the present. He urges us to observe our ego, to watch our thoughts without judgment, and in doing so, we begin to disidentify from it, bringing ourselves back to the present. Our relationships, Tolle posits, provide us with the most significant opportunities for spiritual growth. They become spiritual practices 
when we recognize the other person as a mirror reflecting parts of ourselves, helping us become more aware of our unconsciousness. They act as catalysts, pushing us towards consciousness, towards the present. One of the most profound teachings Tolle shares is the concept of being versus doing. In our modern world, we're often caught up in the doing, in the constant hustle, the endless chase of goals and dreams. But Tolle encourages us to find value in simply being, in the stillness, in the quiet of the present moment. He reminds us that we are, after all, human beings, not human doings. The essence of enlightenment, as Tolle teaches, lies not in seeking it but in realizing that it's already within us. It's about silencing the mind, quieting the ego, and fully inhabiting the present moment. It's about recognizing the impermanence of life, the fleeting nature of thoughts and emotions, and finding peace in the now. And so, we arrive at the end of this part of our journey, equipped with a deeper understanding of the power of now. Remember the path to enlightenment is not a destination, but a journey, a constant practice of awareness and presence. Enlightenment, as Tolle teaches us, is all about embracing the power of now. So, what can we take away from the power of now? Well, let's distill it down to three critical points. First, we learn the necessity of immersing ourselves in the present moment. The past is history and the future is a mystery. The present moment is all we truly have. Second, we're reminded that we are not our thoughts. We often let our thoughts and emotions dictate our actions. However, we have the power to observe them without attachment and choose how we respond. Third and last, we uncover the secret of finding inner peace. It's not about searching outside ourselves, but discovering it within, right here, in the now. These lessons remind us to stop, breathe and truly live in each moment. Remember, the power of now is within you. It's time to embrace it. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe, like and share your thoughts in the comments.